My name is Mark Shuttleworth, uh, founder and CEO of Canonical. Uh, I'm here in beautiful Berlin at the Canonical Commercial Sprint, where all of our commercial colleagues come together from around the world to talk about strategy and products and partnerships. And I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to sit down with Randy Holloway from Microsoft to talk about what we're doing to bring open source uh, to, to market together on Azure. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, it's real great to be here with you. Um, uh, just to introduce myself a bit more, um, I'm Randy Holloway. I lead the cloud and AI platforms go to market at Microsoft with a focus on migration and modernization of our customer workload. So we think about that across infrastructure, apps, and data. Um, certainly AI is the key driver for that. That's what I focus on, and one of our big priorities uh, this year, we just launched our new fiscal year uh, at the beginning of July, is uh, really being much more focused and intentional about growing our market share around Linux and open source software, uh, because that's what our customers need. So really excited to be here with you guys at the commercial sprint and to have these conversations. Um, you know, Microsoft just read the AI kind of landscape so beautifully, um, your kind of fast, fast moves with open AI, uh, the moves with Copilot, uh, the, the, the fact that you've been able to be right at the front of the kind of coding revolution with GitHub. Um, you know, to, to, to my eye, you've really positioned your kind of stack solutions uh, and, and, and posture brilliantly for this AI sort of world. Um, how do you see the intersection of open source and AI? What, 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 what sorts of things are you prioritizing? Sure. Yeah, so I think first off, like, you know, we have to look at the market reality, which is that, um, you know, for Microsoft, while we have a huge investment in our history around Windows Server and SQL Server and all these other first party, you know, infrastructure tools and solutions, um, you know, in 2025, uh, in this moment with AI, you know, almost uh, all of the development energy is in the open source ecosystem. And of course, you know, we want to be a part of that. We want to enable customer journeys on that platform. And so for us, it's we, well, we've been working on our open source strategy for nearly 15 years as a company. Um, today, it's really all about meeting customers where they're at. And so what, what we're finding is, is that customers, um, are looking to the open source community for the innovation. Um, and they're much more than ever investing in open source development to uh, make AI a, re AI a reality in their organizations. So one of the key initiatives that I've observed Azure really being at the forefront of is, is confidential compute. And that feels to me like it's a really interesting kind of combination of the benefits of public cloud but also the sorts of um, regulatory or, or industrial kind of confidentiality or privacy that's required for people to be really comfortable with sensitive data. So, so how do you see those things coming together? Yeah, well first, um, you know, want to acknowledge that the journey we've been on together with Canonical um, to validate the confidential compute platform with Ubuntu has been critical um, to us, uh, you know, really validating the solution and market with customers. Uh, today, you know, where we're at is that, you know, we not only see critical industries that are focused on confidential compute, so like financial services and others, but we're seeing this um, trend around data sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And so many of our customers are looking for ways to implement more sovereign controls in the public cloud platform, and they view confidential compute as one of those elements that's going to help them to do that. So tremendous amount of interest and growth there, um, and across industries that we weren't seeing even, you know, 12 to 18 months ago. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's an incredible kind of a joint effort across the industry to make it possible effectively for CPUs, GPUs, uh, you know, storage and everything to all kind of work in some, you know, some, some distant place, but in a way that is really provably confidential and private. Um, so I, I know that we've done a ton of work with Azure and with NVIDIA, for example, to make it possible to have GPUs working on encrypted data. Um, and you know, what about the developer experience? Where do you see the sort of open source developer experience and the cloud developer experience um, going? What are the trends there? Yeah, so I think there's a few things we're seeing. I mean, uh, the first is that uh, our customers are very focused on not only you know, providing a great developer experience for their developers, but also increasing their productivity so it's not only about the use of open source software, but thinking about the tool chain, um, uh, integrating capabilities like AI assisted 
you know, for developers with um, tools like GitHub Copilot for us. And we're seeing a lot of interest there, but obviously it's an open ecosystem. So, you know, we try to meet the customers where they're at. Um, many of the customers are embracing Microsoft tools, but obviously there's many other tools and options that we see in the market. But, but ultimately what we're seeing is, is that that powerful combination of open source, um, not only for the speed to business outcome, but also as a source of training data to optimize um, these uh, algorithms to make developers more productive. It's a huge part of, of our focus. And really where, where we see this going is, is that it's gonna create an opportunity for developers to be much more productive, produce much more software in their organizations and have faster time to delivery of new services. So very much top of mind for us. And we're excited about new ways to um, optimize how those tools help customers throughout the entire DevOps life cycle. So a lot of the a lot of the kind of headlines around AI have been these sort of frontier efforts, which are really specialized in typical enterprise exercises, yeah. right? Um, but we do see now the technology and the capability becoming very, very uh, you know interesting to the enterprise. You've historically um, um, gone gone very deep on things like .NET, which became a, a sort of a, a very productive kind of platform for enterprise developers. How do you see kind of AI crossing over and becoming kind of ordinary and easy for an enterprise developer to integrate into their application development pipelines or their or their narratives or their plans? Um, you know, what's your sort of understanding or, or view on how? This, this kind of sci-fi laboratory AI experience turns into a kind of a business development experience for a typical developer in a, in a business environment. Yeah, I mean, so I think it's a number of things. I think number one, it's like thinking about um, how is AI going to be integrated for customers that are at different stages of the journey. So obviously, uh, both of our organizations work with, with customers that are at the frontier hmm. and they're producing industry-leading innovation but obviously it's a very small percentage of the customer base. And so for most of our customers, it's really thinking about, you know, um, delivering business solutions um, and, and having, achieving the fastest time to value. So uh, on the Microsoft platform, we're thinking about it in a couple of ways. Uh, number one is um, we have our AI foundry platform that we, uh, that we leverage to deliver model as a service um, that offers uh, ML ops capabilities and sort of an ease of use in the developer experience to expose the APIs. But, but really for many customers as well, they're embracing open infrastructure and open source um, where they're wanting to bring in frameworks um, and just use Azure infrastructure to deliver AI capabilities. And, and we think it's great that we have those options you know, for different customers that have different needs. I think ultimately what we're seeing also is that capacity is a driver. Um, and multi-cloud is a reality for a lot of our customers. They're, they're having to go to different clouds to even meet their capacity goals um, or achieve their business goals uh, in different dimensions and they're incorporating AI. So all of those trends, I think, what, what, it, what it really comes down to is are we providing the right choices for those customers? Whether it's on the open infrastructure using you know, open source tools, um, is it with our service, is it publishing models that are, that are obviously built in the open source community, but we want to make them available through our Foundry platform. So we're really using all of those elements to deliver the customer experience. In terms of sort of other trends, AI is kind of super dominant at the moment. It's the yeah. thing that everybody's talking about, right? It's the it's the it's the, the the revolution of the day. But are there are there other trends in the background that you think are interesting at that sort of intersection of developers and cloud? Yeah, I think there's a few. I mean, so the first is that, you know, optimization and cost management cloud is very critical. And what we've seen is that many customers in an effort to move fast and have faster time to market in cloud, they haven't always taken the best approaches to be, to be optimized in terms of how they're deploying. So thinking more about um, incorporating uh, tooling that drives better optimization. We do view um, open source as a, as a huge part of that as well um, to drive down cost and scaling the infrastructure. Many of our customers are spending more time and putting more investment, not only into FinOps strategies overall, but tooling and automation and even AI-assisted capabilities that drive those efficiencies. That's a big one. I think the other thing we're seeing is uh, customers looking at um, the, uh, the range of modernization options available. And this is a challenging space because I think for many customers, they don't have the maturity or the capability to rapidly modernize legacy applications. 
But I think that's one of the areas we have an opportunity to partner on together, mm -hmm. is how do we introduce like concepts like containerization and uh, reducing the friction for customers that are uh, addressing legacy applications and infrastructure and moving through that modernization journey. And we're definitely seeing a big focus. There's not only a cost benefit to that, but that really provides the customer with a better um, uh, foundation on which they can integrate AI into those solutions. So um, I think the, the, the last one I would call out is, um, and this is particularly true for the enterprise customers, is starting to rationalize um, the enterprise resource planning software and platforms, um, which is important for many of our customers, but it's extraordinarily expensive, and thinking about ways that they can use AI and new capabilities um, around modernization to surround those solutions to make them more agile and responsive to the needs of the business. So there's just some of the, the themes and trends we're seeing. AI is a part of all of those. I think AI is starting to kind of infuse itself into everything, but, but it's not about AI. It's really about efficiency, um, time to value, um, and overall like unlocking more value in the enterprise for many of these customers. So I remember you introduced Arc as a sort of a, <clears throat> a bigger picture way of describing what people were trying to do, what, yeah. they, what, what, what they needed to stand up effectively in, in the Azure environment. And then you did this really brilliant thing with Kubernetes where you essentially enable people to use Azure as a unified control plane on Kubernetes wherever it, wherever it is. Is that, is, is that sort of, was that a first step towards essentially saying, look, wherever the customer's gonna be, you need to be able to give them a FinOps type view or an operational type dashboard or a, a, a kind of a unified experience from developer to operator effectively. Yeah, totally. I think that this, uh, this concept, we refer to it as hybrid and adaptive cloud is really important for our customers because that sort of um, A, shared control plane for visibility across all the environments, um, it can drive new insights, it can drive opportunities to identify these areas that, that would benefit from these efficiencies earlier. That's super important. But also understanding that like, for many of our customers, there's not a lot of business value um, in the migrations or in the cloud journey for all of the workloads, for all the elements in their environment. So these capabilities allow them to have that shared observability and visibility of the resources, but also to effectively prioritize the things that are more important for their business and the process. Um, that's a huge trend. And then also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, these, these trends around uh, you know, industry regulatory, you know, requirements and sovereignty requirements and things of that nature are just forcing customers to, um, you know, rationalize, mm -hmm. you know, what they're moving to the public cloud. And so we, we, we continue to see the public cloud growing. We think it will continue to grow. But for some customers, they may be more selective about which workloads they're prioritizing today based on various requirements. So ARC has been a big enabler for us in that strategy. And we've also inter introduced new capabilities in ARC to then make the migration journey easier once that resource is under management in that, uh, that hybrid control plane. Um, uh, you, you talked about the tension between kind of going fast and, and, and being efficient, right? Yeah. Sort of going fast and optimizing. Those yeah. things are sort of in tension with each other, right? If, you, if you're hell-bent on getting you know, something deployed, then you may, not be think, you may, may not have so much time to think about how to optimize it and, yeah. and, and make it efficient. Um, do you think AI could effectively shift that equation? Do you think, do you think in the same way we're seeing productivity gains for people writing code that we might see productivity gains for people writing infrastructure as code? Is that the? Oh, I, 100%. I think, the, I think the, the, the end game here is that all, in all aspects of the life cycle, whether it's um, you know, planning you know, software development projects, all the way through the development life cycle, the, um, not only the productivity of the individual developer, but also in the context of the team in which they work, um, uh, you know, generating documentation, um, providing uh, artifacts that enable better support, um, you know, faster time to provision and deploy, um, improved, you know, planning and more proactive planning around optimization of resources to kind of drive down the cost. In all elements of that process, I think we see AI coming in. Now, here's the question that I think we have to answer, which is like, uh, for those individual customer journeys, like what's most important to them today? Because again, we can go in and we could talk about all these different capabilities and all these kind of um, options. Um, many of our customers um, would struggle with all those choices. And so I think some in some cases, we have to think about how do we simplify those conversations and get really oriented on their priorities but there's a ton of opportunity throughout the whole life cycle and we're seeing customers engaging across all of it. So Mark, uh, one of the questions I have for you is, 
how are you thinking about the partnership and some of the opportunity areas for us to further innovation together? I know there's different uh, capability areas you guys are investing in, new areas that are unique to Azure. You want to talk to me about you know a few of those? Yeah, I, I mean for me the beauty of cloud is the time to value, right? The 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 the, the fact that one can compress the the sort of time from you know saying oh, this sounds really interesting, I'd like to try it out, to actually having something up and running and 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 productive, right? Cloud, I think, has just been completely transformative, mm -hmm. um, and so you know as an example of one of the things that 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 we've been working on, um, enabling people to stand up a Kubeflow. Kubeflow is a, a big piece of machinery that will allow, for example, all the different data scientists and machine learning type people in an organization to share compute resources on a cloud. Um, we've been doing a bunch of work to, to, to enable someone to essentially commit to getting a Kubeflow uh, you know, up and running on Azure and having that running within 20 minutes, right? And I, I think um, the fact that you have compute capability on tap, that you have GPUs that are difficult for organizations to get directly themselves. The fact that you have some of these unique services for um, sort of standing up, offering inference model as a service and so on, allows someone like us to essentially shape something like that, really take advantage of unique Azure services, and then put that in front of customers as a kind of, um, not an impulse buy, but, but certainly something that can be tested and actioned you know, very evaluated very, very quickly, right? And I'm excited about um, the fact that, that, that the open source world, of course, has so many rich offerings, which are difficult for organizations to essentially instantiate and integrate and operate. Mm -hmm. Working with Azure, I'm really confident that we can bring a bigger and bigger portfolio of things to market and deliver them much faster and, and integrate them with your unique capabilities. Randy, it's been great to speak. Thank you for everything we do together. And I really appreciate that we've had the opportunity to talk a little bit about the future. Thank you, Mark, for having me. It's been great to be here and excited for the work we're going to do together.